This video is the second part on our applications of quadratic equations. Um, so in the first video we had applications where the formula was given to us. In this video we're going to talk about applications where the formula isn't given to you. So you have to kind of do a little work to get the formula. Um, so these are word problems and we've seen them before except for now they'll have quadratic parts to them. Uh, we see the area of a garden is 500 square feet. If the length of the garden is 15 feet more than twice the width, determine the dimensions of the garden. So first thing, you know, if you're working on a problem like this, if you see a word problem, you should be writing let statements uh, to represent your variables. And I'm going to let x equal the part I know the least about. So you should think to yourself, well, if I'm trying to find the dimensions of the garden, what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find two things. I'm trying to find the length and the width, right? The length and the width are what the dimensions are. And they told you about the length in terms of the width, but they didn't tell you anything extra about the width. So we're going to let x equal the width, which is, you know, what we know least about. Well, how would I describe the length then? Well, the length is 15 feet more than twice the width. So you want to start with your unknown, right? Start with your x and work backwards. So here's your width. Twice the width would be 2x, and then it's 15 feet more than. More than means you're adding. So it's 2x plus 15 is equal to... The length. That helps you can draw a little diagram. You don't have to, but right, we have x and we have 2x plus 15. Now it asks us to find the dimensions, but how do we find the dimensions? Well, it's got to be based on what they already told us. Here. So it's the area, right, is 500 square feet. Well, the area of a rectangle, area is equal to length times width. So we know the area, they told us it's 500. So the area is 500 square feet. It's equal to the length. The length is 2x plus 15 times the width, right, which we called x. Right? So this is coming from our let statements. And I want to solve this. Now remember, when you solve this, you can't just set each of these equal to 500. That's not how it works. Um, you can only do that if this was 0 on this side. So you want to distribute x in. So I have 500 equals 2x squared, right, x times 2x, 2x squared, uh, plus x times 15 is 15x. Now how do I solve this? Well, now I want to subtract 500 from each side, because remember when you solve a quadratic, you want to get one side equal to 0, so I have 0 equals 2x squared plus 15x minus 500. And now how do I solve this? Well, you could solve it by factoring if you wanted to. Um, if you think you could factor that easily enough. If you weren't sure how to factor it though, you know you know quadratic formula or complete the square. Um, I'm going to use quadratic formula. Right now, if you could factor it, go ahead and factor it, but it might not be obvious to you. So I'm going to use quadratic formula. And quadratic formula, remember it's the variable equals, in this case x equals, and remember you only can use it with a quadratic, right? So remember a B and C are the coefficients, so A is 2, B is 15, and C is negative 500. The quadratic formula, remember, was negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, just as a quick reminder. So negative B is negative 15 plus or minus the square root of B squared. Well, B is 15, so it's 15 squared minus 4 times A. A is 2 times c, which is negative 500. Make sure you take the sign with it. And it's all over 2 times a, so 2 times 2. And then we're going to simplify this. Uh, so we end up with, this is negative 15 plus or minus the square root of 15 squared is 225. A negative times a negative will make this a positive, so we know we're adding there. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 500 is actually 4 thousand and if you can't do that in your head you could use your calculator and then two times two in the denominator we have four simplifying this i have negative 15 plus or minus the square root of uh, this is going to be 4225 when i had four thousand plus 225 this is all over four let's see that square root we're going to evaluate it here so square root of 4225 remember i'm doing this because an application um you wouldn't just use your calculator automatically if it was just a, a problem where you were simplifying to solve. Um, because it's an application problem, we do want to know what the exact values are. So I got 65, so that is a perfect square. 
All right, 4225, and you take the square root of that, and you get 65. That means that 65 times 65 gave you that uh, 4225. So it's a perfect square, which works out kind of nice. So we got negative 15 plus or minus uh, 65 over 4. Well, how many answers is this? This is two answers, right? The plus or minus gives us two answers. We've got negative 15 plus 65 divided by 4, and you've got negative 15 minus 65 divided by 4. Evaluating the first one, um, remember these are the x values, right? So we're fine. Evaluating the first one, negative 15 plus 65 is going to be 50 over 4, which if I divide that out, 50 divided by 4, I get 12.5. Now remember what you're finding, 12.5 what? Well, what's x? x is Going back up here to your left statement, the width. What's the width measured in? Well, this is measured in square feet, and this is feet. It's going to be feet. So it's 12.5 feet. Uh, negative 15 minus 65, that gives you negative 80 over 4. Well, that equals negative 20, but what do we do with that? Well, since it's negative, you reject it because you can't have negative width, right? You can't have negative feet, in other words. So when you do this, the 12.5, you found it here, this is x, right? So x equals 12.5 feet, and this is the width. Make sure you answer the entire question. 12.5 feet is the width. Well, what's the length? The length, you go back to your let statement here, is 2x plus 15, so now we're substituting in. So the length, remember, was 2x plus 15. We now know what x is. All right, so the length is 2x plus 15. We're going to substitute x, which is 12.5. So 2 times 12.5 plus 15. And that's equal to 2 times 12.5 will be 25 plus 15, which equals 40 feet. All right, so the dimensions are, you know, 40 feet by 12 and a half feet, the length and the width. Make sure you're clear on which is which. Um, and, you know, it's not that challenging of a problem. Now, what this really does tell you is that because you know, the square root count to a perfect square, it does tell you that this would have factored. And if you could have factored that and solved by factoring, that would be fine. Um, but it's okay to use quadratic formula here. You know, it reinforces what we've done in the past. And, you know, it's an application problem, so that's why I just took the square root and evaluated it right away. If this was just a problem where I just gave you the equation and asked you to use the quadratic formula, uh, you got to make sure you simplify that radical on your own like you normally would. Let's take a look at another example. So we've seen problems like this before, uh, you know, this is just the same type of problem in a new section. So we've got, you know, Lisa travels in a motorboat going downstream, so with the current. So that means the water is pushing her faster for 12 miles, all right? And she turns around, but she then turns around and heads upstream against current, so the water is slowing her down, right? It's coming at her, so it's slowing her down until she arrives back at her original starting point. The total time of the trip took her five hours, and the speed of the current is two miles per hour. If she does not adjust the throttle to change the speed, determine the speed that the boat would have traveled in still, wa in still water. So first off, make sure you understand that we're using distance equals rate times time when you see a problem like this. They're talking about rate, they're talking about you know speed miles per hour, they're talking about time, they're talking about how far she went. So you know you're using D equals RT, distance equals rate times time. And you should write a let statement indicating what we're trying to find here. What do they ask us trying to find? The one thing they ask us to find is determine the speed of the boat in still water. So we're going to let x equal the speed of the boat in still water. It's not the speed of the water, or it's not still water. Sometimes people write that. That's not what it is, right? Still water doesn't move. All right, so it's the speed of the boat in still water. If there was no current, how fast is the boat going? That's what it's really asking. And if you remember what we did previously, we would set up a chart for this. And we'll talk about going with the current. And we'll talk about going against the current. And the formula we're using, we already mentioned, but it's distance equals rate times time. Okay. So let's talk about what we know, and when we fill in this chart, what we'll have. So first off, the distance, did they tell us how far? She was going downstream for 12 miles. So with the current, right, she went 12 miles. 
Then she turned around and headed upstream until she got back to her original destination. So her distance going with the current and against the current, well, it's the same in this case, right? She went 12 there, 12 back. So it's 12 for both. What's the rate she traveled at with the current? Well, the rate she traveled at is the speed of the boat, right? And with the current means the current's pushing her more quickly. It's making her go faster. So with the current uh, means that you're going to add the current to it. So it's the speed of the boat plus the speed of the current, which is 2 miles per hour. So it's going to be x plus 2. Then when she goes upstream, right, she's going against the current. The current's going to come at her, so it's going to slow her down. So it's the speed of the boat minus how fast the current's going. So it's x minus 2. And the order matters on this uh, because, you know, the current's slowing you down, but you're still going faster than what the current is. Otherwise, you'd never make it back upstream. So x minus 2, right? The speed of the boat minus the current is slowing you down by 2 miles per hour. So what about the time? Well, they told us the total time, but you don't just sub 5 into here. That's not how it works because 5 is the total time, and you can't just split it in half. What you really have to do is understand that if I have distance equals rate times time, and I was trying to solve this for time, we're going to divide both sides here by the rate. So I end up with time is equal to distance over rate. Now we've done this before in previous sections, so you might have seen this, you might remember it. So time is equal to distance over rate. So this time, right, is going to be equal to the distance over the rate. So it's going to be 12 over x plus 2 for her time going with the current. And the time against the current, well, it's distance over the rate. So it's 12 over x minus 2. And then this part here where it took her 5 hours, this is where you're going to use it when you set up your equation. This time plus this time, right, the total time is equal to this plus this, the time with the current and the time against the current. So you're going to set up an equation here. The equation is going to be the time with the current, 12 over x plus 2, plus the time against the current, 12 over x minus 2. And this is going to be equal to the total time, which is 5 hours. Now, we've seen this type of problem before. Uh, and right now, you know, this is no different than what we would have done in the previous section. All right, making sure that you understand that now we've got a rational equation, right? An equation with fractions. And when you go to solve a rational equation, what do you need? Well, you want to clear fractions first, so typically the first thing we do is find the LCD. And the LCD for this entire equation is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 2, right? You want each of the factors that's present in the denominator to be fact, uh, present in the least common denominator. And what do I do with the LCD? Well, I multiply it to every single term, including the 5, right? Even if it's not a fraction, you multiply it to every single term. That's what keeps an equation balanced. So we multiply this by x plus 2 times x minus 2. We multiply this by x plus 2 times x minus 2. We multiply this by x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now when I do that, remember what I'm doing. I'm doing this to clear fractions. So, right, the x plus 2s will cancel here, right? This is multiplying by x plus 2, you're dividing by x plus 2, so they cancel out. So the first term ends up being 12 times x minus 2. Plus here, the x minus 2s will cancel, and you're left with 12 times x plus 2. And it's equal to, here we got 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Nothing cancels there because it's not a fraction that has anything in the denominator cancel out. But you have to have written those factors there, it's not going to work. So now we solve. To solve this, first thing we want to do, distribute through. I'll distribute 12 through here. So we get 12x. 12 times negative 2 is minus 24. Here we'll distribute the positive 12 through. Make sure you take the sign with it. Positive times a positive makes us a positive 12x. A positive 12 times a positive 2 makes us a positive 24. It's equal to on this side. I would multiply the x plus 2 times x minus 2 together first. Now you should know that uh, when you multiply these together, right, kind of like multiplying by its conjugate, you can do the first and the last. It's actually, you know, this is a result of factoring the difference of perfect squares. x times x would give you x squared. x times negative 2 would give you negative 2x, but then the inner 2 times x would give you positive 2x, so they cancel, and then 2 times negative 2 um, will give you negative 4. So we got 5 times x squared minus 4. Uh, let's simplify this further here. Uh, we get 12x plus 12x combining like terms gives me 24x. Negative 24 plus 24, those cancel out. So I got 24x is equal to, here I had to distribute 5, so I have 5x squared. 5 times a negative 4 is a negative 20. 
All right, so once you're here, since this is a quadratic equation, right, the highest power I see is 2, I want to get everything on one side and 0 on the other side. In other words, I need to get the standard form. So to do that, I'm going to move 24x over by subtracting 24x from each side. I end up with 0 equals, I've got 5x squared minus 24x minus 20. Now to solve this, right, quadratic equation, you can factor it if it's factorable, or you can use complete the square, or you can solve by the quadratic formula. Um, I'm going to use solving by the quadratic formula here. So the quadratic formula, uh, if you remember, right, I'm not going to rewrite it, um, but you're solving for x, you're solving for the variable, so it's x equals, now remember, a is 5, b is the negative 24, take the sign with it, c is the negative 20. So quadratic formula starts with negative b, so it's negative negative 24. If it's negative from the formula, and then negative uh, 24 is what b is. So negative negative 24 plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared, so of negative 24, make sure you put parentheses around it, squared, uh, minus 4 times a, which is 5, times c, which is negative 20, and this is all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 5. And now we'll simplify this, and we get negative negative 24 makes it a positive, right? Negative times a negative makes it a positive, plus or minus the square root of negative 24 squared. Remember, a negative squared is going to make it positive. If you're not sure what 24 squared is, we'll just do it here quick. Uh, 24 squared, we got 576. Negative 4 times 5 times negative 20, and negative times a negative is going to make it a positive. Uh, 4 times 5 is 20, 20 times 20, that will be 400, so plus 400 here. This is all over 2 times 5, which is 10. And then we have 24 plus or minus. Remember, you got to simplify the inside of this. You can't take the square root of each piece. Sometimes you'll do that by mistake. You have to add these together first, because you can't just take square roots of each piece individually um, for addition or subtraction. So 576 plus 400, that's the square root of 976, all over 10. And then, because it's an application problem, we'll approximate this. Remember, if it's not an application problem, you need to simplify this um, using your rules for simplifying radicals and keep it in the exact form. But since it's an application, we'll simplify this. we got 24 plus or minus uh, the square root of 976 times a 31.24 over 10. And then remember, this is two answers. Right? The two answers are... 24 plus 31.24 divided by 10, and 24 minus 31.24 divided by 10. 24 plus 31.24, uh, and the numerator here will be 55.24 divided by 10. And so this equals, we would have, dividing that by 10, you can look at it as moving the decimal place over, or you can do it on here. 55.24 divided by 10. Uh, we got 5.524, and I'll just approximate it to 5.5 using one decimal place. So 5.5, remember what we found, right? This is X, right? What was X representing? X was the speed of the boat in still water. What was it speed measured in? Speed is measured in miles per hour. So this is 5.5 miles per hour. You can use MPH or you can write miles and then slash hours. So 5.5 miles per hour we got here. Here we had uh, 24 minus 31.24. Well that's going to be a negative 7.24 over 10. And as soon as you know it's a negative over a positive, you know this is going to be negative. If I know the answer is going to be negative here, remember we're trying to find the speed of the boat. The boat speed can't be negative, so we reject this answer. All right, so we only want the positive. So the speed of the boat is 5.5 miles per hour. So everything in this problem that we did above, we've seen before. This is not anything new. The only new part is when we went to solve this, we used the quadratic formula. All right, everything else that we did in the past still still held true, and you should still remember how to solve these. Sometimes you'll forget from chapter to chapter throughout the course, but it's important to understand it the whole way through. Uh, let's take a look at one more word problem here. So we got two mechanics, Leo and Dominic, take six hours to rebuild an engine when they are working together. 
If each of them worked alone, Leo would complete the job one hour faster than Dominic. How long would it take each of them to rebuild the engine alone? Okay, so uh, again, we've, we've done problems like this before where two people work together to complete a task. And, you know, the process doesn't change at all. Uh, since it's a word problem, though, the first thing I want to do is write some let statements. So it says, how long would it take each of them to rebuild the engine? So I'm looking for both their times. I'm looking for Leo's time, and I'm also looking for Dominic's time. So you need a let statement for each of them. Now, you typically let x equal the one you know the least about. So they told you if each of them worked alone, Leo would complete the job one hour faster than Dominic. So they told you about Leo in terms of Dominic. They didn't tell you about Dominic. So we're going to let x equal Dominic's time alone. And then, okay, how do you describe Leo's time? So Leo completes the job one hour faster than Dominic. So Dominic's time was X. One hour faster than Dominic, keep in mind how, how time works. If I'm working faster, it's less hours. So I want to actually do X minus one is equal to Leo's time alone. Be very careful here. It's very easy to put the wrong thing because faster sounds like you do plus, but in terms of time, a faster time is less time. So it's X minus one for Leo's time. And then once you have the let statements, now we're going to set up a chart like we had in the past. So here's Dominic. Here's Leo. And if you remember how we set up these charts for people working together to complete a task, we had their rate that they work at multiplied by their time working together will give you the part completed by that person. All right, so remember how the rate works for these. When you work alone on a task, you complete one task for every so many hours. So for instance, if I was to say I cut the lawn in two hours, my rate I work is one over two because it's one lawn for every two hours. So when you use rate here, you gotta think about it's one over the time alone always. So what's Dominic's rate? Well, his time alone, we don't know what it is, but you know, we called it X. So his rate he works is at one engine built over his X hours alone, right? So one over X. Well, what's Leo's rate? Well, his rate is one over his time alone, which was X minus one. So it's one over X minus one, right? One engine built over um, X minus one hours, right? That amount of time. Now, what's their time working together? Well, that's the six hours, right? So it's six hours to work together. So, all right, take six hours when they are working together. So that's six for both of them. You don't use a reciprocal here. This is just the value, right? Using the reciprocal for the rate. So what's the part completed? Well, you multiply the rate times the time together. The time together times the rate, you just multiply the whole number to the numerator. So six times one is six over X. It would be Dominic's time, six times one over x minus 1, all right, is Leo's part completed. So Dominic's part completed is 6 times 1 over x, 6 over x. Leo's is 6 times 1 over x minus 1. 6 times 1 is 6 over the x minus 1. This is all old news. We've done these problems before. So the part completed by Dom is 6 over x. The part completed by Leo is 6 over x minus 1. Once you have that, you're ready to write an equation. The way we write the equation, right, is based off of, you know, what they did. So the part completed, they work together, right? So Dominic completed six over X of it, plus Leo completed six over X minus one, and it's equal to, so the part completed by one plus the part completed by other, the other is equal to one total task they completed. All right, that's how we set these up. So one task completed when you add their two parts together. And now we have a rational equation. We've solved these before. Well, what do you need when you're solving a rational equation? But you need an LCD. And the LCD for the whole thing here, you have x and you have x minus 1. They're individual factors. You need both x times x minus 1 because you can't multiply x by something to get to x minus 1 or vice versa. So you need both factors. They're not factors of each other. So the LCD is x times x minus 1. And what do you do with it? Well, you multiply it to every single term, including the 1, right? That's what keeps an equation balanced. That's what allows you to do this. So x times x minus 1 here, x times x minus 1 here and x times x minus 1 here. 
And now the reason we do it is to clear fractions, remember. So here you clear the x you're multiplying by with the x that you're dividing by. So the x is canceled, so I'm left with 6 times x minus 1. Plus here I've got the x minus 1's cancel. I'm left with 6 times x, which is 6x. And it's equal to 1 times x times x minus 1, which we can just write as x times x minus 1. Now if you had a different coefficient, you'd want to put it in front of the x. But 1 times anything is just itself, so we just put x times x minus 1. Well, how do I solve this? Same way I did in the last one. I'm going to distribute through. So 6 times x is 6x. 6, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Plus 6x six equals here distributing x through. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. You should be able to do that fairly quickly. Uh, let's combine like terms. 6x plus 6x is 12x minus 6 equals x squared minus x. And then remember what you want to do when you solve this. When you solve this, really you want to get... Uh, everything on one side is 0 on the other side because you're solving a quadratic equation. So that's how you get the standard form. So I'm going to subtract 12x from each side here. And I'm going to also add 6 to each side. I'm going to do this all in one step. You should be able to see what I'm doing here. So this left side becomes 0. It's equal to x squared negative x minus 12x. That's negative 13x. Be very careful, right? Negative 1 minus 12 makes it more negative. So negative 13x plus 6. Now, everything we've done so far is all old news. We haven't done anything new here. But this is something we've talked about in the past. Uh, when you're at this step here, you want to solve this quadratic equation. Remember, the ways we learned how to solve were either factoring, quadratic formula, or complete the square. Uh, when you're looking at this, now you got x squared minus 13x plus 6. If you were to try to factor this, you would, you know, see the x squared in front. There's no GCF, so you could multiply, you know, x times x for the first part. You want things to multiply to 6 and add to negative 13. There aren't any numbers that do that. So solving by factoring won't work. Uh, so we'll use the quadratic formula. And we have x equals, now remember how this works, it's negative b. So it's negative, b is negative 13, so it's a negative negative 13. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 13 squared. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 6, right? 1 is the coefficient of the x squared, in case you're not seeing where I get that from. And then 2 times a, 2 times 1, the coefficient of the x squared. Don't put any x's in here. Remember, you're solving for x when you do this. So this is equal to a negative negative 13 makes that a positive 13, so negative times negative makes it a positive. Plus or minus the square root of negative 13 squared, and negative squared makes it positive 13 squared is 169. Uh, minus 4 times 1 times 6, well it's minus still 24, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. And so this equals, let me I'll do it down here, so it's easy to see. Uh, I've got 13 plus or minus the square root of 169 minus 24 is what, 145. You can subtract that on a calculator if you needed to, over 2. And because it's an application problem, we'll approximate what the 145, the square root of the 145 is. If it wasn't an application problem, you would want to simplify this as much as you can, um, you know, using our rules for simplifying radicals. So this gives us 13 plus or minus 145, uh, taking the square root of that. Square root of 145 comes up to 12.04 all over 2. And then, remember, this is an approximation. We've got two answers here. And, you know, you want to use one as 13 plus 12.04 divided by 2. The other is 13 minus 12.04 divided by 2. These are the two answers we get from here. 13 plus 12.04 divided by 2. 13 plus 12.04 Divide that by 2, I end up with 12.52. Make sure you're using the correct order of operations, right? You would add these together to get 25.04 divided by 2, which equals a 12.52. Since I'm going to round to one decimal at the end of this, I'll use this 12.5. Make sure you know what the units are. This is time, right? That's what x was at the beginning, time. Time was measured in hours in this problem, so this would be 12.5 hours. Uh, for the second part here, 13 minus 12.04 gives us, if you subtract it, 13 minus 12.04, uh, 
divided by 2. So it's not negative. You can't just reject it because it's negative. Sometimes people do that by mistake. 0.96 divided by 2. Divide this by 2. Uh, you have 0.48. So this comes to 0.48. This would be measured in, again, hours. It's time. So, you know, if we want to do one decimal place, we'd say, you know, point, approximately 0.5 hours. Meaning a half hour. Um, but it's okay. We, we understand what we're looking at here. It's time. But neither of these came out negative, so we can't reject them. But they can't both be right, right? If you look back up here, right, this is the time that uh, Dominic worked is what X was. That's what we found. Well, if Dominic worked for 12 and a half hours, right, that would work out. And then Leo would work 12 and a half minus 1, which would be 11 and a half hours. But if Dom worked for just half an hour, 0.5 hours, right, half an hour, and then Leo's time would be 0.5 minus 1, it would be negative. So that's where the negative actually comes into play. So we're going to reject this. Well, you don't reject it because the number itself is negative. You're going to reject this because, right, you're going to reject this because Leo would be negative otherwise, right? And you can't have Leo be negative uh, in terms of his hours work. That wouldn't make sense. So... Dom worked for 12.5 hours. We found X. Don't forget to finish the problem, right? So Dominic's time alone is the 12.5 hours. All right. What's Leo's time alone? Well, it's 12.5 minus 1, which is 11.5 hours. And you should know that, all right? You should know that this is what makes sense when you're doing the problem. So sometimes you will get two positive answers, and to reject it, it doesn't mean always reject the smaller one. It depends on the premise of the problem. Um, so you do have to go check to see what makes sense in the problem we did. Again, everything up here at the beginning, two people working together on a task, we've already covered in previous sections. The only new part was when we did the quadratic formula and then solving uh, to reject. When we look at this, remember, because these are applications, I'm simplifying the square root down to a decimal. Uh, if it wasn't an application problem and I had just given you this and I asked you to solve for the exact answer, you would have just simplified this as much as possible using our rules for radicals. Uh, so... Uh, that's it for the word problems in this section. In the very last video for this, we'll talk about solving for a variable.